Every little boy dreams, and my dreams always had mountain sheep in them. My dad, well, he was my hero growing up. He was everything a father should be. He was strong, honest, hardworking, and an avid outdoorsman. He believed in family, and above all else, he taught me the value of integrity. My dad was larger than life, and I wanted to be just like him. At a young age, I was exposed to sheep hunting. My dad killed a bighorn ram when I was four and a half. I loved everything about rams, and having one in my little hands ignited a lifelong passion. In 1982, we moved from Montana to Northern British Columbia. Many of the friends my dad made in BC were sheep hunters. Naturally, he started hunting sheep as soon as he was able. In 1990, I finally went into the mountains on horseback with my father and got my first stone sheep, a beautiful double broom ram. We never looked back. We hunted from horseback all through BC in search of rams and we enjoyed great success. The plan was to hunt by horseback on the same route as L.S. Chadwick when he killed the world record stone sheep and hunt as long as it took, a week or a month. It didn't matter. Getting ready for sheep hunting? I've been ready for two days now. <laughs> Other than a few bales here and there. Are you excited? I'm really excited now. It wasn't until two days ago. Too much work to do. Now we got sausage cooking in the cooker. Final deal. The day before we're going hunting, you mi mixed up a batch of sausage, eh? Yep. You gotta have hardtack. <clears throat> well, we got one job left to do, and it's adjust the brakes on the trailer, and that's it. The day before we're going. Well, we must have been doing it too early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna follow in the tracks of some famous sheep hunters. Well, yep. you're famous yourself, aren't you? <laughs> Not as famous as those guys. Well, those guys, a lot of them didn't have 50 years of sheep hunting under their belt either. Well, we know they weren't telling stories because we saw their signature on the best of cabins before they burned them down. That was pretty neat to see. Hey, you saw Jack O'Connor's name in there, right? Jack O'Connor's name was there. Atchison. Do you, do you put your name on that cabin? Oh, yeah. We wrote our name there. We got a few sheep up in there. We took quite a few sheep out of that profit country. How old are you now? Almost 71, another month. Not too many people your age still sheep hunt. Glad to still be able to do it. Wouldn't do it if I didn't have a young son taking me along, that for sure. <laughs> well, maybe I would. How you doing buddy? We just had an unfortunate accident here. Right off the bat. Pack slipped and he went over there into the swamp and cut his leg open so we're heading home. I said in the military they say as soon as you meet the enemy your plans change. Yeah. Kind of the same thing with sheep hunting, hey? Eh? Yeah. We went home, dropped off the hurt horse and we headed right back up the road. When's the first year you went sheep hunting? 74. What was happening in 1974? I was in grad school doing a mountain sheep thesis. Where was that at? Montana in the Veracruz Mountains. Where were you living? <laughs> we lived up in the mountains in a ranger camp. You, did, you were you up there by yourself? No, by the two kids. Little baby. And three year old. Did you have a good time up there? Yeah, it was a lot of work, but it was a really good time. Beautiful country. How'd your wife like it? She liked it. This is the first year I've never, I don't have an ending time or a starting time for the hunt. We're just going as we can. And we're going to hunt until we get what we want. Or if the first of September comes along, we might have to quit and restock, and start over again. <laughs> you know how many people I've ever heard of that have done a hunt like this in the modern times? Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. Well, I'm sure there's a few around, but not very many anymore. Probably not for that length of time.
Mike Hammett was gracious enough to put us up at Sickening River Outfitters tonight. Beautiful place. The old man did really good today. Horses did good. Took had a nice easy day. We're gonna be on tomorrow. Everybody's tired out. We spotted a couple of a little tiny ram and three ewes, four ewes. They're right up here. Up in that basin. Ones of the year, These south facing basins are always good to good to look into. Camping <laughs> light tonight, we're just sleeping under a tarp. It's dead calm out. How you feeling? Pretty good now that I'm off the horse. Getting... After a couple days, the aches of a 70 year old body started to show up. Got our little stove going. Pretty damp out, everything got soaked today. Had a big thunderstorm come through. I got pinned in the creek underneath the horse. It flopped over. It's quite a day. Morning. Good morning. Slept like a log last night. Yeah, we got video to prove it. <laughs> Guess I snored. The boy worked me hard. There's nothing like traveling the mountains by horse, but sometimes you need a veterinarian when one just isn't around. One of our horses had kidney failure and Nathan Simmons flew in much needed medical supplies to try and save the horse's life. It's been a good trip so far. Had some horse trouble, we traveled a lot of country. I'm sure I've had a lot of fun, I wouldn't trade this for anything. Another tough day at the office. Sixty-two hundred and sixty-seven feet. Watching him walk down through that beautiful high country, well, it haunts me. You like this place? I like it. Pretty wild. At this point, we were in some of the best stone sheep country there is. The horses were tired and the rams were scarce. We'd put on some serious miles and we weren't seeing much. Boone, thanks for bringing my water up, buddy. Up the river without very good paddles. <laughs> As I watched him glass those big mountains, I couldn't help but feel so proud of my father. Another day at the sheep office. Well, we ended up making the wiki up here. Forgot the tarp. That's all made out of dead branches, moss, and boughs. We're going to be staying in that tonight. Living off the land, huh? Mushrooms and chicken. Making a little meat and mushroom soup. <laughs> Stopping to pick a few huckleberries on the trail. Found this old grizzly rolling around, burying up. We lived off the land a lot, stretching our supplies as far as possible. Strong. <laughs> 
little hungry. Losing lots of inches on my belt. After about 10 days of hard traveling, my dad was starting to feel strong. I had him on rations and he was always hungry and he let me know it. What's happening around the neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> Sausage, cheese, rams in the hills. A couple of rams behind us, little ones. Morning. Hey, good morning. Nice ram spotted right across the canyon. I got up, made some coffee, opened the tent flap. When's the last time you slept in, got out of bed, looked out your tent flap and saw a nice sheep? I never have. <laughs> this was a good ram, but we let him walk. We were looking for something special. We were in great ram country and we didn't have a care in the world. What are you having there? Ice cream sandwich, can you believe it? <laughs> I dried one, but it tasted amazingly good. Nobody in Duffield Creek has ever had an ice cream sandwich before in the history of the planet. Probably not. <laughs> it's rather good. The last five or six days, I haven't had any pains or anything. Things have been going really good. Feel better than I have in years. As I watched my dad walk down that high ridge, I knew more than ever that his medicine was strong. Another no sheep mountain. <laughs> Pretty steep, eh? Yeah, it is. Here you can see a sulfur lick. Sheep have been using it pretty heavily. Come on. Come on. Come on. Little grizzly bear fur on a tree in the camp. There'll be sunshine when I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> We're just looking across the valley over there on that rocky pile and there's seven rams over there. There's another legal ram. Not overly big either, we're gonna let him go. Pretty rugged country. There's about 500 foot drop off right in front of us here. So what advice would you give somebody that was looking for sheep that came up here looking? Go with somebody that knows what they're doing. They can help you out a lot. But Hunting sheep on your own never a good thing anyway. Not very safe for most people, especially my age. Don't want to do it now. <laughs> Sometimes the trails aren't so good. Stopping a little lunch break at the Prophet River. Do a little fishing maybe, catch a few fish for supper. Up here in the Sheep Mountains having a little fish fry. And we're cooking some fiddleheads. Frying some oyster mushrooms. The hunter-gatherer culture is strong in our family. We had limited supplies and took advantage of every extra meal we could scrounge up. Keep that iron on there. Day 29. Just before dark, I spotted a large ram and watched him bed down. The next morning, early, we caught the ram moving across an open hillside at 600 yards. We let him feed over the skyline and out of sight. My dad could have made that shot, but I made him wait. 
I watched my dad struggle up that steep hillside, his will unstoppable, but his body failing, not wanting to quit. We worked our way over the top carefully, not wanting to spook the ram. I eased over the skyline, and there it was, a horn tip, barely sticking up over the skyline on the ridge below us. Good work, Dad. What a beauty! Probably my last stone sheep. Because it's just such a great hunt. Love you, Shane. Love you too, Dad. Good work. You really kicked <laughs> us. <laughs> what a cool place. That's the best ram I've killed. For lots of reasons. Life size cape coming up. Pick up a rock, Mom. Right where I shot from. Just any old rock, just so she knows I was thinking of her. How about that one? It'll do. So after all these years of sheep hunting, what's going through your mind right now? Here's a better one. Hey. This is the best hunt I've ever been on in my life. Lots and lots and lots of reasons. <clears throat> Tough, we've seen beautiful country and we're in the best there is right now. The neatest place, the place I've ever been in my life. With the best friend I got. As I watched him walk out to the point of that ridge, I knew he was overcome with emotion. He just stood and stared out over the vast landscape. I'll never forget that moment. How you doing? Perfect, perfect, perfect. What a ram, hey. Look at the size I think. In the 40s, I think. How old is he? Pretty cool. I think he's 10 and a half. Great, great effort, great ram. Congratulations. You deserve it. At 71 years old, my father my best friend and my hero anchored the ram of a lifetime. The culmination of a spectacular life focused down to one laser sharp second of perfection. 30 days on the trail of Chadwick. This hunt was one for the ages. Step at a time. <laughs> what a satisfying little jaunt that was. Tough but fun. We did it. There you go. Now we gotta find a really tall rock. <laughs> no, get, on, get on that horse now. Good work. Great thing to do here, Kate. Right when it's fresh, just get it in the creek and just let the water run by it. Clean all the blood off of it. <laughs> You're just like a hermit crab over there. So this is the way we're winding up our sheep hunt. We're total freaking enemies. <laughs> These are some of the things they don't show you in the sheep hunting videos. When you're out for 
close to 30 days, you gotta do your own laundry. I'm gonna show you a magic trick. I'm gonna turn this rock into a big rock. Come here. Drop it. Ta-da! <laughs> mm-hmm. Keep ready. We spent the day relaxing, enjoying our success. How's that taste? Man, really good. Finally, bad weather hit us. Cold rain and snow, and it didn't stop. The wet, miserable time. No bottoms to my rain gear. So I had to make a poncho out of. back for the flatlands. Everybody's whipped, but look what we got. <laughs> Nasty weather, huh? Yeah, yeah. Blue tarp like camel. What happens when you lose your rain gear? Hey. First time I ever seen one piece standing up in a dress. Above the goats. You look like a little rain hobbit. <laughs> well, miss hobbit. Drying out another time today. Stop for the night. Everybody's done. I'm wet. Not very good. Tell me about that ram that the grizzly bear went after. Oh, many years ago, we saw a ram that was probably 45, 46 inches all by himself. We were late in the evening, too late to go after it. We were planning our hunt for the next day and it walked up over a rise and there was a grizzly with a black cub and a sorrel cub not very far from and they charged down the hill and took after almost got that sheep the sheep ran and the grizzly kept going and then the sheep stopped and it just about got it finally it jumped off and up a cliff and gone we never ever did see it again biggest one i've ever seen you ever think about that sheep sure just uh, glad it got away from the grizzly <laughs> First sun we've seen in 10 days. Oh. Ah. <laughs> the weather broke finally, and we decided to call Joe Cobbett to help us cross using a jet boat. Howdy. <laughs> it's a lot deeper than she looks, eh? Safe and sound. There's a little bit of rain around here. So we're just rolling into home right now. Transmission alarm's going off. <laughs> but we made it. But we made it. At 39 days, this was the longest hunt either of us had ever attempted. We rolled into the yard at home with the transmission failing, out of food, and the horses tired. My dad had lost 38 pounds on the trip. I had lost 28. But we had his ram and memories that you couldn't put a price on.